I quit two weeks in. <laughs> I'd gone full time as a freelance website designer, but in just two weeks, I was crawling back to a nine to five job. Not because I couldn't design, I could, but because I had no clue how to get clients. No roadmap, no plan, just a lot of late night Googling and crying on my couch, wondering if I had made the worst mistake of my life. But fast forward a year, I was booked out months in advance, turning away clients I once would have begged to work with at the start. So if you're sitting there with no clients, no portfolio, and no idea where to start, then this video is for you. I'm giving you the exact four day roadmap I would use if I had to start again from zero today. The one I wish I had back then. To go from maybe I could be a designer to Oh, I just signed my first real client. Day number one, decide what it is that I'm offering and who it's for. The biggest telltale sign that someone is very new to business is thinking that you have to do everything for everyone to get anyone to hire you. Branding, SEO, websites, logos, copywriting, social media, all across five different design platforms. It can be confusing when you start because all of these sort of different bits and pieces and projects, they all overlap. So where does a web design project start and where does it end? The answer is a web design project starts, you building a website on one platform, no copywriting, no ongoing advanced OCO, no logo design, no ad management. Those are all other services done by other service providers typically. Trying to offer everything will burn you out so fast and it won't get you clients any faster. Successful designers do not offer everything to everyone. So here's what I'd do differently if I was starting over. I would pick one thing to offer and one kind of a client I'm excited to build for. Inside of my dream client booking blueprint, that's my step-by-step -step system for finding clients and booking clients as a new designer, we dive even deeper into how to refine your offer and dial in the type of clients that really light you up. But for today, let's just start here. First, your offer. Pick one skill, one platform, one service. I am not trying to be a full service agency as one person. I am not offering branding and copywriting and Facebook ads and SEO. I'd pick a skill I'm already pretty decent at at or willing to get good at and double down on that. For me, it was Squarespace websites. I already knew how to use Squarespace. So instead of trying to master five different programs at once, I went all in on that one. No WordPress, no Webflow, no show it. Simplicity wins at the beginning one platform, one service. That kind of focus makes it easier to sell, easier to learn, and easier to actually deliver great work even when you're just starting out. Now the second thing you need in day one is your dream client. Pick a type of dream client that you're excited to work with. Not necessarily a niche yet, don't overthink this, but do think about who you would love to build stuff for. If you love classical, traditional design, maybe you're more excited to build websites for wedding venues or interior designers, not rock bands or tech startups. This isn't about chasing the biggest market, it's about picking a type of client whose style you like, because if you're excited about the work, you'll just naturally put in more effort and your portfolio will look a lot stronger at the end. So if you want a quick shortcut to picking your dream client, just think about what kind of websites am I personally drawn to? Whose aesthetic of other designers feels closest to my own style? And what kind of industries would I feel proud and excited to design for? You don't need to lock yourself into one market for forever, but starting with some idea of a dream client gives you a type of like work direction before you get those first real clients. The biggest mistake the beginners make. <laughs> They try to build a portfolio first before they know what they're offering or who they want to actually work with. And that is the fast track to wasting so many hours making portfolio pieces that don't actually attract the right clients that you wanna work with. So instead, pick the dream client type first, pick one clear offer first, and then build portfolio pieces that would actually attract that specific person. And that is how you get momentum fast. So day one, your exact plan is this. Pick one design platform that you already know or can learn really quickly, not more than one. <laughs> For me, that was Squarespace. And then choose one clear service to offer, not an entire list of services. For example, full custom website design, a five to seven page website, no branding, no SEO, no social media management, that's an offering. And then also identify the dream client type based off the industries and styles I'm most excited about. For example, interior designers, wedding venues, creative businesses, those sorts of things. And then write a simple statement to keep my focus and myself really clear about what I'm doing. So it could be, I design classic Squarespace websites for creative businesses. And yes, the portfolio is important, but it's not day one. Don't you stress, we will get to portfolio in just a moment. Moving on to day two, 
pricing yourself. The first time I ever quoted a price, I picked a number that felt safe, then immediately apologized for it and offered a discount before they could even respond. And guess what? They said no, and I still didn't even get the project. Meanwhile, the first time I set a real price and stuck to it, the client said yes without blinking. So one of the biggest mistakes that new designers make is they pick a price just out of thin air, and then they immediately lower it because of all of their fraudy feelings. And what happens next? They end up with the worst clients. Needy, demanding, scope creep nightmares. But anyways, here's what I wish someone would have told me then. Get familiar with the real value of what it is that you're producing. For example, a website. A website is not just pretty design, it is a business tool. It builds credibility, it drives leads, and it sells products. It is one of, quite literally, the most valuable assets a business can have. Proper, experienced designers charge real prices because they know the value of what it is that they're delivering. Think about it. If a business makes an extra 50,000 a year because their new website brings in better clients, then was a new website for a few grand actually expensive? No. It wasn't. It was an investment, and a really smart one at that. So you're not selling the number of hours that you work, you are selling an asset that helps that business grow. And here's the kicker. The less a client pays, the more of a pain they are. Low budget clients tend to be the most demanding, the most disrespectful, and the hardest to please. So if you think that lowering your prices will make your life easier, it will not. <laughs> Set a price that's reasonable and then stick to it. And don't price based off of your feelings. Feelings like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough yet, or I don't have a portfolio yet, or this project feels too simple to charge that much. And instead, price based off the value that you're delivering. And the market range. How do you do that? Well, take a look at what other real working designers are charging. Get a sense of the normal range for entry-level website design in the platform of your choice. And then stay so far away from race to the bottom marketplaces like Fiverr or Upwork. Your price is not a flea market negotiation. New designers treat pricing like it's a flexible thing, like, oh, let's talk or let's negotiate. But experienced, successful designers pick a price and the client either pays it or they don't and they go somewhere else. And this isn't about being rigid or rude, it's about confidence. Confidence is honestly contagious. When you have a set price, you look more legitimate and you make it easier for clients to say yes to you. And remember, the most established designers list their prices up front. Making it hard for clients to find out your pricing, like waiting for a sales call, actually makes it kind of harder to book clients, not easier. Clients who pay more tend to trust you more, micromanage you less, respect your design decisions, and lower paying clients tend to nitpick every tiny decision, expect unlimited edits, treat you like an employee that they get to boss around, not a partner. So truly, raising your prices and having reasonable prices isn't just about earning more, it's about protecting your peace as well. A very quick note on scope creep. Scope creep, that is clients asking for just one more thing, is way more common when your prices are lower and your boundaries are very unclear. Whereas high paying clients, clear prices and clear scopes prevents that sort of headache before it even starts. So here's your exact plan on what to do on day two. First, set a project-based price. For example, let's say you were brand new and maybe you're like, okay, I'll charge $1,700 for a five page website. And then decide what exactly is included in that price. So maybe it's five pages of the website, a custom design, basic mobile optimization, no SEO, no branding, no copywriting. And then post those prices publicly or at a minimum have a clear pricing guide ready and stick to that price no negotiations. If a client says, can you do it for less? The answer is no, the same way that a coffee shop doesn't haggle over the price of a latte. And make sure you set very clear boundaries to prevent scope creep. For example, five pages, two rounds of revisions, and launch support for a month. No extra add-ons without a new contract or additional fee. And also, Focus on offense, not defense. Instead of lowering your price to match your confidence, I would actually raise my skill level and my confidence to match the price which I wanna charge. Moving along to day three, Yes, we get to talk about your portfolio now. If your portfolio is wrong, your client list will absolutely be wrong too. And that's why this part is so important because your portfolio is proof. It shows what you can do and that you can do what you say you can do. And it's how potential clients judge the quality of your work before they ever even speak to you. Inside my dream client booking blueprint, I actually give you a full done for you client product briefs complete with business names and written copy and brand vibes and even pre-selected cohesive, beautiful stock photos. So you can skip the hardest part and just focus on building your portfolio really quickly. So if you don't wanna spend hours figuring out what kind of fake business to make or what to write or what photos to use, it's all done for you inside of the blueprint. Because having all the content ready for you is how you manage this thing in a day and not make this portfolio creation take weeks. But here's the thing, your portfolio 
is not just about looking good, it is about attraction. It's a magnet, it's a way to show off the kind of work that you want to do more of, and it's a tool to attract the dream clients that you decided on back in step number one. And bonus, it's also your way to sanity check your pricing. If you've already landed a few clients, but they aren't the kind of projects that you're excited about, then the first culprit to look at is your portfolio. Because like attracts like. The work that you show is the work you'll get hired for. So if your portfolio is full of low budget boring projects, guess what inquiries you're going to get more of? More low budget boring projects. If you want better clients, you have to show better work, even if you just have to create it yourself first. So here's how. Here's your game plan. Make that portfolio piece reflect the industry and style and vibe of your dream client. If you want to work with wedding venues, don't design a website for a fitness influencer for your portfolio piece. If you want to attract creative studios, don't build a website for a trucking logistics company. It's honestly not about locking yourself into one niche for forever, but it is about building momentum by creating portfolio pieces that align with the kind of work that you actually want to get hired for in future. And also make sure to future-proof your portfolio. What I mean is every project you build sends a signal about the kind of work you want to get hired for next. And here's the thing, dress for the job you want, not for the job that you have. Same with your portfolio. If you want higher end clients six months from now, start building that kind of website that they would expect to see today in your portfolio. So build for where you want to go, not just where you are right now. Just imagine this. A few months from now, a dream client stumbles on your portfolio and thinks, ah, oh, that's exactly what I want. That's what we're trying to build towards. And remember, for this to work best, make the thing feel really real because it is real. Give that fake client a name, a mission, real looking services, choose stock photos that really fits the vibe, write real sounding copy and define what success would look like for their website. Is that more bookings or more consultations or more sales? And then treat your fake dream client like a real client. The more real your project feels, the more real your portfolio will feel, and that's what attracts those really fabulous clients. And here's the best part. You actually don't need to pay for anything up front to do this. Platforms like Squarespace have free trial periods. You can design a full website without paying a single cent for it, and that's how you can make your portfolio. So here's your marching orders and exact plan for day three. First, come up with three example dream clients. For example, a boutique wedding venue, an interior design studio, and a personal stylist. And then treat them as if they were real clients. Give them a name, a brand vibe, and business goals. Gather stock photos, write sample copy, define the business goals for each website, and really think about what would a real client in this space want their website to accomplish. And then design full websites for each one. Can be five pages, can be seven pages. Do do the mobile responsiveness of it. Make sure that it's like clearly goal focused design and make sure you use those free trials. So again, platforms like Squarespace will allow you to build out an entire website without actually paying for anything, which is perfect for building your portfolio on a budget. And then share those finished pieces with a few real designers and then ask them, hey, what would you charge for a website of this quality? And then align that future pricing and positioning based off of real feedback, not just your feelings. Moving right along to Dana, Number four, pitching. This is where we get your name out there. If you have no social media following, no connections to local businesses, no one knows your name, and you have no email list, then good. Most people don't have any of those things when they start either. Here's the truth. Clients are going to magically just find you. Yes, later on, once you've done great work and built real momentum, clients will actually just start to find you and referrals will start happening naturally. But at the very beginning, you don't have that luxury quite yet. So you need to start putting yourself in front of those ideal clients to even be considered even if that feels awkward. Honestly, here's the real talk. People are so afraid to send a pitch because they think of it doesn't land a client, then it's failure. But here's the truth. The failure isn't sending a pitch and hearing a no. Failure is not trying at all staying quiet, staying stuck, not even putting yourself out there. That is the real failure. So if you're afraid of failing, the second you send a pitch, no matter the outcome, you're already winning. You are doing something that most people will not do, and that's what actually matters. But if you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, what do I actually say? <laughs> you don't need to figure that out alone. Inside the blueprint, I have a ton of different proven pitch scripts written, which you can quite literally just plug and play and focus on actually sending the pitches that land clients. Here is what I would do with my time on day four. Create a simple pitch. Start with people you already know, friends, family, old coworkers, past employers. You're not asking for charity. You are offering genuine real value to people. Think about it. If someone has a business, a blog, a brand, or even a dream of launching something online, then obviously they need a website. And you are providing something that they genuinely want and need, something they've probably been meaning to get around to for quite a while now. You're not asking them to do you a favor, you're offering them an opportunity. A high quality, thoughtfully designed website at a price they'll probably never see again once you been doing this for two or three years. And so if you frame it that way, because it's true, you're not 
pitching yourself, you're pitching how you can help them. So show your work, those portfolio pieces that you created, say why you'd love to work with them, specifically explain what a fantastic opportunity this is for them to get a custom website that reflects their goals and brand and be clear about what you offer and what problem you solve. And if you don't have a warm network, that's no problem. You can pitch local small businesses, just go and walk into coffee shops or boutiques or gyms or salons, anywhere that could use a stronger online presence. Pitch past employers or companies that you've worked for, pitch entrepreneurs that you just admire, even if you've literally never met them, pitch projects posted online. There are freelancer websites where projects are posted every single day, but this is important. Don't sit around waiting to be discovered. That works when you've built experience and have results behind you. But when you're just getting started, there is a snowball's chance in hell of clients magically just appearing on your doorstep, you do need to put yourself out there. You have to put yourself in front of potential clients. No one is going to just come knock on your door and ask if you happen to design websites. So treat that pitching like a practice. You know how in yoga classes they often say, they're like, it's not yoga perfect, it's yoga practice. It's the same thing with pitching. It's not pitching perfect, it's pitching practice. And not every single pitch has to be perfect and not every pitch will get a yes, but every pitch is a step forward and a step closer towards your dreams. And over time, with that practice, you will get better. You will genuinely land clients from it. And eventually you'll pull yourself in that beautiful position where past clients or new clients, sorry, just start coming to you. But at the start, this is what it honestly takes. And every successful designer that you see has done exactly this. So day four, here's your plan. Create a simple pitch template. Introduce yourself, show your portfolio, say why you're reaching out, explain the benefit to them and offer a clear next step. And then list out maybe like 10 businesses or people that you could pitch to. Friends, family, old bosses, local businesses, online listings. And then set yourself a daily pitch goal. For example, three or 10 pitches a day, and then write a few pitch variations to customize based off the person. And then commit to getting uncomfortable and taking action anyways. And remind yourself that the only real failure is doing nothing. I will learn from every single pitch. I will be proud of the action I took, even if it felt uncomfortable. In fact, because it felt uncomfortable. That's why I'm proud of myself. Everything that we just covered, that's what I'd do in the first four days if I had to start again from zero. But there is a day five, the final step that ties this whole plan together and takes you from sending pitches to actually booking dream clients. And that's what we dive into in my dream client booking blueprint. It's a step-by-step -step system that walks you through everything you need to find, pitch, and book dream clients, even if you have no experience, no portfolio, no social media following. And it costs less than the price of one dinner out. It is literally the exact roadmap that I wish I had when I was crying on my couch at 11 p.m. wondering if I had made the worst decision of my life trying to be a website designer. So if you're serious about booking real clients faster with less guesswork, the blueprint is where you'll get the full strategy with many of the pieces like the pitch scripts and the client briefs and portfolio building materials already done for you. You can check it out at pagebrunton.com forward slash blueprint or just hit the link in the description below.